And welcome to Chaos to Clarity. I'm meteorologist Bernie Reynolds. It's been a while since I've done a video. I think it was, I don't know for what winter storm we have. I can't remember that fall. But I want to talk about the hurricane season. We are in the hurricane season right now. Uh, take a look. Uh, this is the hurricane season. You know, it begins June 1st, although you can get, there's been some years we've had, um, uh, 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 name systems before the start of the hurricane season in May. The hurricane season ends the end of November, but we've seen storms in December. But primarily, the majority of the storms occur right in here during the heart of the hurricane season, which to me is about August 15th through the month of September. But you do get a little spikes early season development. You see this in here, where you can get what I call homegrown development. Sounds complicated, but it's really easy if you think about it. You know, when you think of the heart of the hurricane season, you think of tropical waves coming across the Atlantic Basin uh, and if conditions are available or are um, favorable, you can get development. This time of the year, you have tropical waves, but it, it is very unlikely you get development this time of the year. And I want to show you why. Uh, this is uh, one of the reasons and really the main reason why Saharan dust. Look at all of this dry, dusty air coming off the Saharan desert, desert. So basically, this whole tropical Atlantic, you, you won't get development this time of year. There are always exceptions, but there's just too much dry, dusty air. So these waves can't deal with the dry air. And typically, you still have some wind shear that you're dealing with here. So if you're looking for development in the tropical Atlantic this time of year, you, you're not going to see it. But how you get development this time of the year is uh, from what I call homegrown development here, um, where you're looking at development close to the United States. Let me explain uh, how that works here. It's when you get an interaction between the jet stream and the tropics. Watch how the jet stream drops south in this example. See, there it goes. Now, when it drop, drops south, these upper lows where the jet stream brings in cold fronts and upper lows, right? And if you can get an upper low or a cold front to come in here and stall, you can get showers and thunderstorms to develop. And if these showers and thunderstorms can develop and sit over the warm waters of the Caribbean, the Gulf of America, or the Southwest Atlantic for a minimum of 48 hours, you can start the process of tropical development. It is important to remember, though, that these are not tropical systems when they first start to develop because they're being developed by cold core systems or the dip in the jet stream. So it's not purely tropical. So that's why you need a minimum of 48 hours for those showers and thunderstorms that develop from the dip in the jet stream from upper lows or fronts to sit there, slowly develop, and then you could get tropical development. I think the easiest way to get them are, are two ways, with an upper low or... You can get a gyre to form in the Central America, all right? And gyres sounds complicated, but it, it's really not. Let me, uh, how gyres actually work is, what ends up happening is when you have this dip in the jet stream, think about it this way, it's a pretty easy concept. When you have a dip in the jet stream, what happens? Well, it comes down, it's got to sit here again for 48 hours. You change the wind flow across Mexico, which is generally out of the southeast to the west-northwest. However, the easterlies continue here in the Caribbean, so you can kind of see what happens. You end up getting this broad area of low pressure. You get showers and thunderstorms to develop, and then if these thunderstorms can sit here in the open waters of the Caribbean, you can start the tropical development. So again, when you have a dip in the jet stream, homegrown development, you have three ways to get development. Upper lows, fronts, and gyres. All right. With that being said, do we have any of those conditions in the Atlantic? And the short answer is kind of. Um, we, we do have this. I want to show you. We, we put this out a couple days ago. This is our chances for tropical development. Low chance. Low chance. And I would give both of these probably less than 20% chance. One off the southeast coast of the United States and a gyre that we are expecting to form here in the Caribbean. Now, if it stays in the Caribbean, it moves northward, it has a chance. That won't be until next week, but there's also a possibility that, yeah, the gyre forms, but guess where it goes? In the Eastern Pacific. So that's why right now we have low probabilities for development in both of these areas. 
The one in the Caribbean into the Gulf of America wouldn't be until next week. The one off the southeast coast of the United States would be in the next couple of days. Now, in either case, especially with the southeast coast of the United States, it's not a blockbuster storm. But um, we'll have to keep an eye on it. Let me show you what's going on. Let, let's first tackle this area off the uh, southeast coast of the United States. Why are we worried that there's a possibility of tropical development here? Because you have an upper low. The jet stream has come on south. There's the water vapor loop. Uh, let me get rid of that. There you go. There's the water vapor loop right now. Let me get me off screen here so you can see it a little better here. So there's the upper low. You can see it's spinning right here east of Tampa. Now, this is sitting over the open waters in the Gulf of uh, America here. And you will notice that water temperatures are warm enough for development. You look for about 78, 79 it's 80, 81. So water temperatures aren't a problem in this area. They're warm enough. And certainly they're warm enough in the Caribbean. They almost always are. But so water temperatures are warm enough for this upper low. And you could see it sitting here, right in here uh, in the uh, Northeast Gulf. So this has to sit here for a minimum of 48 hours in order to get development. In fact, I have a check sheet here for homegrown development. The interaction between the jet stream and the tropics we're getting that right now, all right, off the southeast coast. You have an upper low over warm water. I think you're going to check that box as well. What I don't think you're going to get is that this upper low sits over the open waters of either the Gulf or the southeast coast of the United States for a minimum of 48 hours for this to translate into a tropical system. I don't think we're going to see that, and let me show you why. Let me show you the modeling on this. I want to go back to the water vapor loop so you can see it. And you can see that upper low spinning here um, in the Northeast Gulf. There it goes. All right. Now, is it going to sit there for 48 hours? Well, let me go to my modeling here. And I want to show that to you really quickly here. Quickly here. Um, let me go to this. So here's the upper low at uh, 2 p.m. Uh, on our um, Tuesday afternoon. See, here it is. It's right here. You can see it right here. Now, does this sit for 48 hours? So that means it has to sit here through Thursday. And if it would sit here or move into the southeast coast, off the southeast coast of Florida and sit here for 48 hours, it can translate into a tropical system. But note what happens to it. Here we go. This afternoon, this evening, still sitting there. But you see what happens by tomorrow morning. Most of the circulation with the upper low by tomorrow morning it's already moving here. Now, you're going to get an area of low pressure here, but the whole upper low, the circulation needs to stay over water, and I don't think it's going to do that. In fact, it starts to come into this, in the Georgia and the Florida panhandle by Wednesday afternoon, and then by Wednesday evening, where's the circulation? It's all the way here across South Carolina. And then what happens to it as we get into Thursday? It moves out to sea. You see that? So it, it, it starts here and then watch it move away. So to me, you, you don't have enough time for this to develop. Now, I, now, can you get an area of low pressure at the surface to form here to produce showers and thunderstorms? Sure. But for this to become a tropical system, even a subtropical system, I, I think the odds are against it. I really do. I think it's less than 10%. Now, I've been surprised before in the past, so let's keep an eye on this area. But that's why we're going to continue to keep this as a low chance for development here over the, uh, over the coming days here. Because I just don't think it reaches the criteria. So we're just going to keep an eye on it. Low chance for development here as we head over the next couple of days. I think it's less than 10% chance. Okay, the last thing I want to look at, a lot of the modeling has been keying down on an area in here in the Caribbean. Nothing right now, but the modeling, especially the American model, has been showing a gyre that forms in here, an area of low pressure, and then this gets drawn northward. Now, the American model is notorious for developing systems. Notorious. It never misses it. It always overproduces. And I, I want to show you this. This was sent by Jesse Farrell, a meteorologist uh, here at AccuWeather. And I want to show you this statistic just to show you how much the American model overdoes this. 
So this is what you're looking at. This is the GFS, the American models. All of the circles are areas that it identified as developing into a tropical storm last year. There were 462 <laughs> times it showed some development and there was 18 storms. 462 and only 18 formed. Now, it has a better hit rate than the European, but it has a much, much larger, I mean, much, much larger um, uh, error. That's my, but the European, by the way, and let me show you the European. European, I believe the number he had was 129 instances where it had a storm and it hit on 18. So it had a better record. I will say that. But, so just so, so you know, when the modeling shows something, you got to make sure you look at it thoroughly to see if it happens. Now, I think a gyre is going to form here, uh, an area of low pressure. But what happens is I think it could easily move in the eastern Pacific. Let me show you the latest modeling on this, and you could see what I mean here. Let's go back to the uh, modeling here. This is the, uh, the uh, uh, GFS, and let me show this to you. Let me put it on full, and then I'll show you the uh, European on this. So this is the GFS. And again, this isn't going to get going until next week, but you can see, you see, you have this little red area on the GFS right in here. This is the latest run. There it is. See, it's trying to form, it, it forms the gyre. There it is. You see all that red across Central America? But what ends up happening is, and the, the, the morning run showed this as well, that it, it does form, but it ends up going in the Eastern Pacific. Now, is that right? I'm not sure. But I do think it appears that both modeling, even the European, Europeans showing this as well next week. You see this area in here of green? It shows it as well. But it also is taking what gyre forms in the Eastern Pacific. Now, keep in mind, we're a week away. So we're going to keep an eye on this. You know, I've been fooled before. So uh, for now, for now, we're going to keep this low probability in the Northwest Caribbean and into the uh, Gulf of America for next week. However, the more and more I look at this, the more and more I look at, well, I think there is going to be a gyre here. But when you look at conditions in the upper part of the atmosphere here, and I'm going to take a look at that right now, can you develop anything here? And let me show you. The answer is looking, at least for now, increasingly no. This is the European 200 millibar wind. And what you're looking for is light winds aloft, all right? Light winds aloft. And when I look at this, I, I don't see any light winds aloft at all on the European. Look at all this. This is all wind shear. It's all in here. Now, I will say this. You've got lighter winds in here off the East Coast, off the, off the East Pack, but th this is way too much shear. The European showing way too much shear in this area. You see that? Too much westerly winds. And even now, the the uh, the GFS is, again, a, a little less in here. A little less. But it, too, has some stronger wind shear in this zone in here. Not as bad as the European. And if that's right, if that's right, then... You're not going to get any development out of this in the Caribbean. Now, we're a week away. I, I don't think anything would start to develop. Well, we're about five, six, seven days away, about five or six days away. I don't think anything would develop here until early next week at the earliest. But this is something to watch because it, it does appear that gyre is going to form, but it could easily move in the eastern Pacific like the Europeans been showing it. For the last week, it's the GFS that's been showing development in the Caribbean and trying to lift it into the Gulf of America. But when I look at even now the GFS, this, uh, the upper level wind flow, you need light winds, low wind shear for this to develop. I'm not seeing it right now. Doesn't mean it can't happen. But because you can see by the time we get into Tuesday, Wednesday, there is some lowering wind shear in here, but it's in the Bay of Campeche. By that time, this thing would get sheared apart unless it moves in the Eastern Pacific. So I think the, low, the, the chances for development here are going to be low. Not impossible, certainly not impossible, but right now we're going to keep that as a low chance. 
I think the southeast coast of the United States, it, it, it's less than 20 percent. And I, I'd even say that now with this area in, in the Caribbean and then the uh, southern Gulf of America next week. So I'm going to keep an eye on it. All right. Hey, listen, this time of the year, your homegrown development, you have to be careful because if something forms, you only have days to prepare for it because it's close into the United States. At this case, at this point, I'm not too worried about the development. Certainly the low pressure off the southeast coast of Florida is going to have bigger impacts because it's going to produce drenching showers and thunderstorms in Florida. And then it comes up to Carolina coast. But I think you got to keep an eye on both. If you have any questions, you can follow me on, on X. I'm at uh, Accureno. And again, we'll be looking at these storms throughout the hurricane season. I appreciate you taking the time in your day to watch the video.